Welcome. In this episode, we'll be exploring the theme for the month of October and Intuitive Insights. I'll be talking about the numerology for the month and what it means. I'll also be touching on key astrological dates and their significance. I'll be sharing angel cards with you and their meaning. And I'll also fill you in on the next cohort of Certified Angel Intuitive at the end. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sandra Ray. I'm uh, an author. I was about to say I'm a Certified Angel Intuitive. I'm an author, I'm a healer, and I'm a spiritual teacher, and I am uh, a Certified Angel Intuitive and Angel Core Healer. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, this is my little friend, Rocky. Hey, Rocky. So Rocky will be joining us for this episode, won't you? She's not too happy that I disturbed her slumber on my lap. Um, so let's get started. So I was tuning in to the theme for the month and what was coming up was a sense of ease and flow. And what that means is it's the end of struggle. So do you want to get down? You go up and get into a more comfortable place. Um, so the thing that was really coming up was that outer appearances, they may seem as if there is still struggle and strain. It may seem that there's still stuff going on that we have to fight against, but under the surface, all is calm. Underneath it all, everything is peaceful, everything is calm, and we're invited to reconnect with that calm, that sense of ease, that sense of flow. And we can go there, we can do that at any time. And what we're really going towards is having this as our way of being, that we can maintain that inner peace, that calm, no matter what is going on outside. And really, it is a practice that we do every day, every moment, and it does lead us towards a uh, true awakening, true enlightenment if we are dedicated to that path and there are so many people who are awakening at the moment there are so many people who are following that path and as each person awakens that opens up the door for so many others to flood through to receive that same insight to have that same experience to awaken to their true nature so I think October is going to really allow for so many more of us to begin to walk that path, to begin to journey towards awakening, towards the end of struggle and towards greater ease and flow. Um, so if you can imagine if the image that came to my mind is of an ocean with those choppy waters on the surface and, you know, think of that stormy, um, you know, rain and thunder and the water just being really, really choppy. And if you sink down, if you sink down to the depths beneath the surface, there is calm, there is peace, there is silence. And that what, that's what exists within each of us. We can access that at any time, but we're so focused on the surface level um, agitation and energy and frustration that's going on that we can forget, we can drop down into the calmness. So it's allowing ourselves to direct our attention away from the circumstances, away from the events out there. When we are outwardly focused, we get caught up in everything that's going on. And so instead of focusing outwards, to reverse that and focus inwards, to bring our attention within. And you might ask, well, how do I do that? How do I bring my attention within? So if you notice a trigger, let's say there's a person or an event, uh, even a noise or something else that just triggers you or bothers you. So what we normally do is we immediately focus on that thing. We focus on the person or the noise or the event or whatever it is that's triggered us. And when we bring our focus to that thing, we amplify that thing. And of course, we usually amplify the frustration. So immediately bringing your focus back in, bring it away from the outer trigger, 
bringing it within and just getting really curious, asking yourself, well, what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it within my body? How does it feel? And getting curious around your thoughts, around these feelings, around what you're experiencing, and just get really curious about what's going on inside rather than the cause of what's going on inside, rather than the trigger. So if it is something like frustration, ask yourself, well, what does frustration feel like? And then beginning to explore a little deeper, can I enjoy this feeling? Can I allow this feeling to be here? Can I allow this feeling to be fully felt? And I think it's really interesting because when you start to ask these questions, when you're in the midst of frustration and you're asking, well, can I enjoy this feeling? Of course, something in your head is telling you, well, no, I don't like it. Um, but there's another part of you that loves the experience of everything that you go through, everything in life, all the um, delicious contrast that you experience. And when I say love, it's not that it loves it. It is totally, um, it's not subject to what you experience it just observes and relishes everything that you go through if that makes sense so for example recently I was in a situation where I had to do something that I really didn't want to do and I could feel that resistance and I was just observing it I was uh, just being with the resistance that was coming up and I knew it would all be fine I knew it was something relatively minor and it wasn't something that I should be concerned about, but it was surprising that there was this level of anxiety almost coming up about it. Um, it was an inner resistance to it. So when it came to doing it, I had these feelings of fear and, you know, you, that, you know, that anxious feeling where you just want to escape. And it was really interesting to watch because it almost seemed overwhelming when I was in that moment um, but I stayed with it I stayed open I allowed the feelings I allowed it to be there and I tried my best not to resist it and for me the first thing I do is just relax my body and just get really curious about what the feelings that are there are trying to tell me and usually those feelings just want to be felt and um, allowed to flow so I got really curious and even though there was still some of that fear there, I was, there was a background knowingness that everything was okay. And there was this thought, well, I'm not going to run away. I have to be here and I have to do this. So the more I allowed myself just to feel the fear, gradually just started to subside and I started to feel better. So in those moments when you are sitting with intense fear or worry or anxiety or sadness or whatever it is, those intense emotions, they are gold. They are, there's so much transformation that can happen in those moments if you're open to allowing it if you don't resist, if you're not trying to escape it or distract yourself or run away, either physically or metaphorically, um, just facing everything head on, fully allowing, getting curious about it. And ironically, when you stop resisting, then it usually fades away pretty quickly because there's an open flow of energy, of emotion to flow through you rather than it getting stuck someplace. So it's like a bit like a hose pipe. If you have, if water is trying to flow through a hose and if you resist the flow by, let's say, standing your foot on the hose and creating a blockage, of course, the water inside doesn't go away. You haven't gotten rid of the water and um, the pressure just builds up on the other side. So if you take your foot away, the flow returns and the water flows out. And it's the same with emotions. When we stop blocking them, when we stop pushing them down, when we stop resisting them, they just flow out and they're done. We're done with them. And you don't have to. Really, the hardest part is the resisting because that creates suffering because it's still inside you. And that suffering is the worst place to be because 
you fear allowing the emotion because you think it's going to overwhelm you and you keep pushing it down but it just creates this ongoing suffering and this cycle of suffering and it's really not a good place to be so if you have the courage just to sit with it just to feel it and it does take courage but I guarantee you it will flow through you and you will feel so much better so let's look at the numerology of October so October is a 10 month so we have the numbers one and zero so one relates to intuition and zero is all about divinity um, it's a circle without beginning or end. So we have this opportunity to tune into our intuition, to access the higher um, levels of vibration, of frequency, and to open up to our divinity on new levels. So I'll talk a bit more about that um, in a moment about the 1010 portal. So let's talk about the astrology and the key dates coming up so we have had mercury in retrograde for the past while and on the 2nd of october mercury is going direct excuse me <coughs> in virgo so we have mercury going direct we also have a number of other planets that have been retrograde which are now direct as well we have venus Mars is direct for the month. We have Saturn direct from the 23rd of October. Pluto is direct from the 8th of October. So we have this forward motion. Um, we have Jupiter, Uranus, they're all going direct. So we have Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune, which will remain in retrograde for the month. But there is this forward motion um, there is this uh, energy coming through with the planets turning direct and especially with Mercury, we'll find there'll be an opening or an easing of communication um, and it's a really good time to start new projects. It, there will be a little bit of retrograde energy still, but it'll definitely, you'll find things moving quicker, you'll find things moving forward. Um, I talked about previously when we're in Mercury retrograde about the inner communication. So you'll find now you may be more open to communicating what you have discovered during that period of retrograde energy where you went within. If you did take that time, if you've been journaling, if you've been connecting with your source, um, maybe you had some revelations, maybe you had psychic downloads. And might be a good time to start sharing those with family, with friends, with, you know, people on your social media accounts, whatever way you feel drawn to sharing that. I know a lot of people here are healers and empaths and working with clients in this field. So it may be that you feel something came through that was relevant to you, but could also help others and sharing that in whatever way feels good to you could have profound effects for somebody else in their lives. And the people who this is, uh, this message is really relevant to, I know you'll feel this, you'll feel this on a deep level that you need to start sharing those downloads, those things, the communication that's coming through that you're channeling, um, that it's really time to open up about that. So on the 9th, we have the full moon in Aries. And Aries is a fire sign and Aries is just such a great energy. This, it's always so, um, there's so much energy to Aries. It's like this confident energy. It encourages like self-belief. It's passionate. And the guardian angel of Aries is Machidiel. Um, Machidiel is linked to the head. So just be mindful on the full moon. Um, if you are overthinking things, if you are up in your head a little bit, you can call on Machidiel, helping you just to ground your energy, bring things down. Um, if there is something that you're really passionate about and you're finding on the full moon that that's kind of coming up strongly, it could be coming up for healing. It could be coming up for release. Um, just being mindful of what you're experiencing around the full moon on the ninth and of course, the full moon is always about healing and release, but really you're going to find that it'll bring that fiery confidence as well. 
and you'll have that power over the full moon phase to really step into that confidence, that self-belief. Um, so yeah, just be mindful for what's coming up. And as I mentioned, the 1010 portal, um, we have that two energy coming up. Um, so on that day, you will have extra opportunity to balance your energy. Remember, I was saying two is all about balance. So being in that gateway of the 1010 portal, um, great off time to align, to balance, just to sit with things and maybe just allowing that Aries energy to settle a little bit, to bring it into balance. Um, and then following that on the 25th, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. So the Scorpio energy is all about transformation and you may be called to transform in some way you may find that you're being drawn towards something or even drawn away from something and um, so just asking yourself if you're being called to transform what that looks like what that feels like and then the solar eclipse energy um, will amplify the new moon energy so it's going to make it extremely powerful and the solar eclipse will add to this energy to bring new inspiration it'll bring new ideas and it may even bring new direction in your life so you might be finding that you're changing direction or just as I said starting something new and if you also are tuning in on the new moon um, with these solar eclipse the energy it's there's that shadow energy as well which is present so asking yourself what has been hiding out in the shadows and you may be called to heal your shadow side in some way and um, so with the Aries energy you or the Scorpio energy rather um with that energy of transformation there may be some healing that is coming about through that new moon uh, solar eclipse that shadow energy that's coming up um, so if that's the case, being very gentle with yourself and being mindful of things as they pass, just reminding yourself this too will pass. Um, so yeah, but overall, really positive new moon. It's all about new beginnings and the ability to reinvent your life in divinely aligned ways. Moving on to the 23rd is Scorpio season. So Scorpio season will begin on the 23rd and it will run until the 22nd of November. So Scorpio is represented by the scorpion um, and also the phoenix. So both have this energy of transformation, which I just mentioned. Um, so Scorpio season will allow for big changes to happen and it could be that there's powerful new opportunities that are opening up for you. Um, it could be that you are transforming um, on the more subtle levels, the more spiritual levels. And that can also be, it can take a lot of energy. So if you are finding your energy is being um, depleted or drained a little bit, just be mindful that there can be stuff going on in the background that we're not fully aware of. Um, there can be a lot of transformation taking place so taking time to meditate taking time out to be in nature and calling on the guardian angel of Scorpio as well Barakiel during Scorpio season to help you to allow that transformation and to step into new opportunities as well and then at the end of the month we have on the 31st we have Halloween or Samhain as it's also called so you may have heard that about 2000 years ago in Celtic Ireland, Samhain was the division of the year between the lighter half of summer and the darker half of winter. And it's the midway point between the equinox and the solstice. So at this division, the veil between worlds was thought to be at its thinnest. So we would say that it would allow spirits to pass through, but really it allows us, it allows this portal to tune in to the higher realms. 
it allows for those psychic downloads it allows for those revelations that maybe we've been struggling to tune into um the angel who if you're interested in working with the angels uriel is associated with autumn and in particular the festival of sound so uriel can help you to really transform in new ways i have a picture here i wanted to show you it's from the angel almanac by angela mcgurr and it's a beautiful portrayal of uriel and um the guardian of fire alchemy so let me just hold this up so this is the picture of uriel and you can see those beautiful golden flames and really just tuning into uriel's energy on the 31st and allowing for that fire alchemy to transform yourself on new levels and when we work with this energy it reminds me also of the bonfires that are lit on halloween it really is that that orange those golden flames that are used to burn away um you know anything that no longer serves that transmuting flames that we can tune into on the spiritual level to transmute within us any dross any psychic debris anything that is has been holding us back and we can work with uh, Uriel to really transform in new ways and if you are calling on Uriel be prepared for massive transformation. Be prepared for things to start shifting. Be prepared for things to start moving forward. Um, so yeah, really beautiful festival and uh, a time where you might find it a little bit easier to tune into your angels and your guides. So we're gonna go through the angel cards. Before we do that, I mentioned at the start that we are going to be opening up applications next week for Certified Angel Intuitive. And it's the last time this year that we are opening up applications. We will be opening registrations again in 2023 at some stage. But if you want to be part of this cohort, if you want to be part of this round of students, I have just 20 places available and if you'd like to become a certified angel intuitive you can register your interest below i'll put a link in the show notes and the pinned comments and you'll be the first to be invited to apply if you register your interest so for those of you who already registered your interest after the last cohort and um, for those of you who didn't take part in it but did register your interest I have your details so don't worry you don't need to apply or you don't need to register again i have all those details no. so the angel cards for the month so three cards came up i'm using the heart and soul angel cards and the first card let me just pull it out and interestingly um, the cards that came up were from this suite, which you can see these colors here represent Pagiel's suite of Heart's Desire Angels. So this card is Arad. So Arad is the guardian angel of self-belief. And this is the card of belief in divine self and the future. So this relates to what we were talking about when we mentioned about this possibility to really step into your self-belief and allowing yourself to really just embrace all that you are. Um, we have during the full moon, the Aries fiery energy, which will be about confidence and self-belief and passion. So you can call on Arad as well as Machidiel um, to help you in that respect. And particularly during the full moon, you can call on Arad to really step into that um, belief in yourself and in your future. And if you have a heart's desire that you're working on, Arad is a great angel to work with 
to help you truly to believe that you're deserving of that desire. So the second card that has come up again, the suite of hearts, desire, angels, Padiel suite of hearts, desire, angels. And this is Ramiel. So Ramiel is the guardian angel of clarity. Um, so this is the card of clarifying life issues with angelic light. And you can see there's like a circle in the middle. It's almost like a magnifying glass with the light at the center. So um, when we call on Ramiel to ask for clarification, to ask for clarity, it can really help towards um, it could be towards certain life situations where maybe you're feeling blocked or stuck or just wanting to move forward, but not really making progress. You can ask for that clarity and you can call on Ramiel to help you. Um, again, I'll put the names of these angels in the show notes because I know some of you uh, like to see how the names are spelled. So Ramiel, guardian angel of clarity is who to call on if you're desiring clarity about your life, about a certain situation, um, or something that's coming up for you in October. Okay. And then the third card. So this card is Angel Zephon. So you can see this beautiful, um, almost like peacock feathers um, in the shape of a butterfly. And Zephon is the guardian angel of awareness. So this is a card of appreciation of life and nature's secrets and the colors of this card remind me almost of that energy of Uriel not quite as vibrant but that kind of autumny uh, golden orangey energy and the when I pull this card I, I very much got the feeling that this was about Samhain and the celebration of nature the turning point in the year the celebration of going from the light into the dark. Um, I don't know about you, but I always, I love the springtime, the summer months, the bright long days. And I always find coming into the darkness, um, there's like a longing for the light. There's a longing for those longer light filled days. Um, so this card, I think it's just reminding us to enjoy every moment, to enjoy every moment because every moment is a gift. And to be in the present, to be in the present moment, and also to enjoy the gifts and the bounty of nature. Um, I was out with my husband and two boys recently. Um, my husband loves foraging for mushrooms. And it's amazing when you do go out in nature and when you're looking for mushrooms, that they're just so abundant. They're everywhere, but you don't see them. You really don't see them unless you actively look out for them you might see some as you're out for your walk but it's amazing how when you start looking when you start exploring how these amazing like purple mushrooms turn up and I don't know the name the technical names for them um but all of these just wonderful colors and the bounty of nature and it's a bit like that when we aren't looking for things to appreciate in our lives. We don't see them. We don't see all the things that are there for us, that are there just wanting to be appreciated. We have to sometimes go looking for that. We have to explore. We have to think about, well, what else can I appreciate in my life? What else is life gifting to me? What else can I explore in my life that is being just is there for me on an daily basis that maybe I've been overlooking um so yeah working with Zephon if um that guardian angel of awareness if you want to tap into and appreciate nature's secrets um so yeah there we have it um the uh I'll see you in the next episode remember to register your interest for certified angel intuitive if that's calling to you you can find out first where the applications are open. If you register, we'll be opening applications next week. So thank you once again for being here. I appreciate all of you and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.